guys, Trisha here from Figurating Studios. I'm going to jump right in here. We are going to do a abstract expressive rose painting today. Since we've had to, a lot of us have had to be at home, I figured I'd post a fun art activity um, so that you guys can jump in on this at home. All you need is a kind of medium type filbert brush, a little bit rougher would be good, but you can definitely make do with whatever you have and maybe some small miscellaneous brushes. You also just need primary colors, yellow, red, blue, and you need a little bit of white. You could also have a paper towel and a cup of water at hand. And this is a piece of canvas paper. You could just use regular paper. Something thicker would be better. I've done like a gray ground, but you could do it right on white, whatever you want. All right, so we're just gonna jump in here and I'm just looking at a photograph of a rose, but just kind of winging it too. So I will post the flower that I'm looking at so that you can have it too. So we're just gonna start out with mixing a little bit of yellow into red. So we're just warming it up a little bit. Okay, and with that, we're gonna do start a base layer on our rose. So we're just gonna kind of start the middle of our rose and then work our way around. Now roses are kind of a spiral shape, so I want you to kind of feel out what the spiral is gonna be. Is it gonna be scooping around this way? Is it gonna be coming around this way? Whatever you wanna feel out. And try to use lots of paint, lots of uh, volume here, kind of impasto style. We're just gonna work our way around. So this is our base layer light and loose but lots of paint it's almost like a gesture style okay now as we go out from our rows i want us to go a little bit lighter so we're going to create a tint which is any color plus white do like a medium pink all right and we're going to work it out All right, now as we go outward, we're gonna get lighter. So a little bit more white mixed in. Now, as you get to the perimeter, consider maybe making your petals a little bit more angular. Looks cool. All right. Hey, that looks nice. Okay, so that's our base layer. And notice I'm just kind of feeling it out. I'm letting it flow. I'm responding to the canvas as I go. This does not have to be a certain rose. Just want you to have fun with it, you know? It helps to kind of choke back on your brush a little bit. Like, don't be up close to it. Okay, so there's our base layer. Now let's go ahead and do like a little rose over here in the background. This one we're gonna keep really like out of focus because it's kind of in the background in my reference. So I'm just gonna block in a little bit of expressive kind of light pink. Okay, and then let's do a little bit of that red with a little bit of yellow as the bud. Now this is from the side. And maybe a little pure red here. We'll kind of 
dabbing, I'm turning my brush, having fun with it. Okay, so now we're gonna add a little bit of depth, all right? So we're gonna start to add some shadows and some highlights. But usually with shadows and highlights, if we're doing expressive especially, we're not gonna use black. We're gonna keep it more of a cool tone or a compliment. So either, you know, purples and blues, or we're gonna do some kind of opposite of what's there. So we're gonna do both here. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of purple. So we're gonna scoop a little bit of red and a teensy bit of blue. Darker colors are always stronger. So we're just going to do our ratio accordingly. Okay. And I've got a nice cool purple. And I'm just gonna kind of decide, well, where's my spiral? How about right in here? I just made this a little stronger, so a little bit more blue. All right, and we're gonna start our spiral here. So see how that kind of starts that shape? Now I'm gonna block in, you know, wherever I feel like the petals will be going down into a crevice. You wanna kind of, you know, be judicious with how much you do. You don't want it to get too dark, but just a little bit of dark purple here and there to give it some depth. Now I want you to do a little bit of light purple too. So make a tint version of what you just mixed. So add some white. Maybe a little bit more. I want it to be subtle, kind of lavender-y. Let's add that around the perimeter. So look, that's already given our rose a lot of depth. Remember, kind of stick to more angular on the perimeter, like the edges of the petals would be. Maybe we'll go ahead and throw a little bit of that on our out of focus sideways background rows over here for fun. Maybe a little of the dark. And notice I'm not really cleaning my brush. I'm just working wet on wet here, real loose. Real fun, no stress. Let's get some nice dark purple. Happy little roses. All right. All right, now we did some nice shadowing. Now I wanna do a little bit more highlighting. I'm gonna rinse my brush since I just had purple on it because I'm gonna switch back to a warm color. Rinsing, rinsing, rinsing. Dabbing on a paper towel. Okay, now I'm going to make like a creamsicle orange. So yellow with a spot of red. And then a little bit of white, so a tint of orange. That's what gives it the cream school pastel look. Love this color. Notice the ratios. Always need, you know, a good amount of white to any color if you want it to make a difference because white is going to be your weakest color. Okay, now we're just gonna do a little bit of orange highlighting around the edge. Okay. 
Okay, maybe a little bit in the center too. So we're just, you know, continuing to layer, continuing to add depth. Maybe you work on that little spiral shape a little bit. Maybe add a little bit to our out of focus rows too for fun. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Okay, now we're going to switch to our small brush and we're going to go into the pure red. Okay. And I'm just going to start kind of defining that spiral. So just kind of whipping some small marks. And this is just, you know, a layer that's going to create more detail. You know, maybe I reference some more of the triangular petal shapes here. Kind of accentuate that spiral feel. However you want to define your rows, this is your rows. It's kind of like pick out those petal shapes a little bit and respond to your painting. You know, like if this is a shadow, then, you know, your petal shape is going to come out from that shadow. Think about where the crevice would be. So you want to focus this red detailing mostly in the center and kind of leave the soft edge on the outside. So that was pure red. Now let's do a little bit of pink. So same brush, but this time go ahead and mix it in with the white. So back to the tint and let's do just a little bit more highlighting. Now you have to dip a lot with the small brush because we're not really using water as a medium besides to rinse. So we want to make sure we kind of load our brush very often here because the viscosity is pretty thick, the texture of the paint. Okay, so I'm just kind of picking some areas to start highlighting. There's the spiral shape again. Sounds like they're having some fun out there. We're making the best of it in these tough times. All right. Looking good, looking good. Let's maybe do a little bit over here. Not too much, because we want this one to stay not too detailed, more out of focus. All right. Now let's do a little bit of pure white. So I didn't really rinse my brush, but I dipped right into pure white. Do just a little bit of pure white highlighting wherever you want, not too much. Just the right amount. Maybe some dots. All right. Now, I feel like we need just a little bit more on the edging before we do our background. So I'm just gonna go back to my big brush. I didn't really wash it, I just kind of dipped it in the water, dabbing it so it's kind of mostly clean. I'm just gonna do like a little bit more light pink, just a few swipes. Not too much paint on my brush now. I just feel like it needed like a little bit more on the outside. All right. And on the out of focus brush, uh, Rose, excuse me. Okay. Awesome. Maybe like some expressive type shapes. You know, get funky with it. And I'm doing that by just turning my brush. Do that a lot in my art when I 
just want to give it a little fun movement and texture. Now remember when you're painting to follow the direction of whatever you're painting. So your mark making echoes the shape of the object and that's a drawing too. And I'm just gonna finish off our rose with just a little bit more of the light purple. Some dabbing. All right, now to do our background, we're gonna do a little bit of green, but we're gonna use a trick here that I recommend to my students a lot. So green is what? Yellow plus blue, right? More yellow, less blue. You can use a palette knife to mix because we're working kind of quick. I'm just using my brush, but always care for your brush. Don't get it too deep in your bristles. All right, so kind of adjust that green to be a darker green. Now that's a nice green, but I feel like for the vibe of our painting, it needs to be more natural, more dulled down. So what is the trick for that? You can actually add the complement. So the complement of red is the, or the complement of green is the opposite, which is red. And by opposite, I mean on the color wheel. So they're complementary colors. Look what happens when we add that red. It's a lovely, lovely dulling natural green now. Okay. And we're gonna finish out our painting wherever you want with some expressive green action. And you can slightly change it as you go. So I just added a teensy bit more blue just to you have a nice change up. And it's up to you how you want to do this. Do you want it to look like petals, you know? Do you want it to allude to that? Or do you wanna just keep it loose, like random brush strokes? Do you wanna try the squiggly, expressive, twist back? Maybe some dabbing. And maybe go just a little darker here in between all right there we go all right just have fun with this guys you know respond to it See what it needs. Do a little layering. Maybe you do like a smidge of yellow. Maybe you mix it in, maybe you don't. Maybe you do a smidge of white. Maybe you do a smidge of pure red and kind of dab it in. Give it a little pizzazz, a little magical edge. key is to have fun and let yourself loose. You know, look how my hand has been constantly moving. I'm looking at my canvas. I'm responding. Some dabbing, some squiggling, whatever you think it needs. All right. We're about done here. Ooh, I just dipped in the pink and it had a bunch of my green left over. I got some nice like green gray. Finish off with that. Mm, that's nice along the edge. That's nice. Maybe even a little into our rose. Ooh, that's nice. That nice. Right, and that's about it, guys. I hope you have fun creating some nice roses, expressive, abstract, building layers, building stages, and have fun with it.
you want to get real crazy, you can always add a little bit of mixed media on top. So you could do a little bit of pearl powder. You could do a little bit of gold or silver or rose gold leaf. Maybe you just crinkle a little bit on top. My students know I love gold leaf, gold in general. So pretty much, if there's an opportunity, I'm taking it. You can use a dry brush and apply a little bit of powder. This is green pearlescent powder. Give it a little extra texture or whatever you have at home. Fun. Maybe a little bit of copper. Copper on the roses. If the paint's still wet, it'll stick by itself. All right, and I'm gonna finish this off with a TT tad of rose gold leaf. Just got this. Now, if you want to do this after it's dry, you just use the glue. It's important to let the glue sit for a few, but I'm just going to apply a little bit very loosely, almost like sprinkled on to the wet paint. All right, guys, calling it done. Thanks so much for watching. If you do this activity, I'd love to see it. So if you post it, tag Figure Eating Studios or post it in the comments. Look how fun and juicy that came out. Thanks for watching everybody. Everybody stay peaceful and well. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Figure Eating Studios. Shout us out and have fun. Thanks for watching. Trisha Atkinson, Art Teacher, Figure Eating Studios, signing off. Thanks.